HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have the latest Hiller Sports update, the Zoning Advisory Committee reorganized, and the Hopkinton Area Land Trust held their annual meeting. And Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. The 45th annual Poly Arts Festival took place at the Hopkinton Town Common. A great turnout was on hand to take a look at the dozens of vendors, enjoy the musicians, and some delicious treats. Um, Poly Arts has been my favorite day in Hopkinton since we've been here, and I think I've only missed two Poly Arts in over 19 years. And um, I ha also have a love of art, so I love coming here and decided to volunteer. So I've been volunteering on Poly Arts for, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 years. And um, we have, Poly Arts, first of all, is a nonprofit, and we um, award at least two $1,000 scholarships to Hopkinton High School graduates who are going on to either major or minor in the arts. And they use the word arts loosely. It could also mean dance, um, theater, photography, creative writing. Um, so that's our main focus. And we raise funds by hosting our poly arts events here on the Common. Each vendor um, submits a fee with their application and that's where our funds come from. And this year we have over 70 artisan vendors. Um, who are on the brick X on the common, but then we also encourage community involvement with our nonprofit uh, groups. So here, this area here, is um, showcases a lot of our nonprofits who have activities for children. So uh, you can see here we've got pumpkin tic tac toe. We've got Hiller's boosters uh, selling gear here. We even have the. Uh, Hopkins High class of 2023 here. We've got paint and party doing crafts, henna tattoos, um, alpacas. The girls volleyball team is over here. They do face painting, nails, and other tattoos. Um, so it's just, and we've got the library's apple crisp is always a huge hit. Historical societies here, Boy Scouts uh, supplies food for sale. Um, and we've got some church groups, educational groups here in town, and live music. So it's a day that's just such a wonderful day to, for our community to come together and share the love of the arts and spend time with each other. I always see my friends here. The third annual Friends of Hopkinton Hopkinton Family Fun Day event took place at the Hopkinton High School fields. Despite the shortened event due to Triple E, a good attendance was on hand to enjoy the festivities. There were many games for the kids, some good music, and plenty of fun for the whole family. Yeah, so you peel it off, and then the dots there, then put it on.
going pretty well. Uh, there is a decent crowd here now. I'll be honest, it's not as crowded as it was last year, and that's because of the probably because of the rain we had earlier. But um, you know, it could have been a lot worse. The rain could have continued, and it would have probably really hurt our attendance. But uh, no, it's um, got a good crowd. We're going to be ending it in about a half an hour or so, but people are still out enjoying the uh, activities and the uh, food trucks. So yeah, we can't complain. Can you talk about uh, some of the sponsors who helped put this event on today? A lot of sponsors. I was just reading the list up there. Uh, you know, McIntyre Loom and uh, Western Nurseries, Joe Regan. There was a ton of them. Um, you know, I, I wish I could mention them all, but thanks for the opportunity to, to acknowledge them because really without their um, contributions and involvement, we really wouldn't be able to pull all this off. And it does take a village, as the saying goes, um, so we thank them for their help very much. The Zoning Advisory Committee recently reorganized and talked about upcoming tasks they have. Here's a look. The Zoning Advisory Committee met and reorganized. I would like to nominate Mary as chair once again. I think she's had one year and she's just starting to get into the swing of things. Second. And I think it would be um, a back step if we took the position away from her. I'll second that. Thank you. I accept the nomination. Are there other nominations? Okay. Shall we vote? <laughs> Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> and vice chair, we should. Uh... I'd like to nominate John Catino as vice chair. The committee also discussed some of their upcoming tasks. Excuse me. I'm not <clears throat> sure what we could do in terms of zoning to address the shortage of downtown. I mean, we need more parking spaces yes. off Main Street, not rezoning the downtown area. So, I mean, kind of putting off the zoning discussion until after this, at one level, still makes some sense because I don't, th I don't see any recommendations we're going to make from a zoning standpoint. It's going to alleviate the situation. That's, that's okay. going to create that, more parking spaces. That um, this is not a zoning, but it's something that the planning board has requested. So it's really just to write some guidelines that they might put into their scenic road site plan review and things like that. <clears throat> so um, again, you know, if anybody comes up with some. Um, extra time on the weekend and you want to write some <laughs> some thoughts down we'll review it here before we pass it on to planning board and say here's some suggestions i actually think the planning board did a relatively good job with that with one of their most recent stone walls when i was paying attention where they asked for you know photographs before and yeah, I remember photographs meeting. after. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to use like stone tools we just or something ever, to move the rocks. So, so review. So I can review that that uh, meeting and just like write down what was said. See if we can put it into some sort of ancient tools document. <laughs> Is this specific to homes on scenic roads? It's yeah. The the um, scenic roads um, with stone walls. There's there's something that says um you know people have to come before planning board if they want to move remove modify in any way um the stone wall the stone wall has to be in the right of way you know of the scenic road and um and planning board generally has um i don't know four or five of these a year to see the entire meeting head over to our youtube page youtube.com slash hcam tv Coming up next, we have the latest Hiller Sports Update. The Hopkinton Area Land Trust held their annual meeting, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services.
welcome back to HCAM News. Hiller's girls soccer and field hockey was in action this past week. Here's a look at what happened. Hiller girls field hockey recently met up with Ashland at Ashland High School. Both teams exchanged goals on penalty corners in the second half and ended in a one-to-one -one draw. Alyssa Souza had the only Hiller's goal. The Hillers followed up with a 2-0 loss in Medfield and a 3-0 win in Bellingham. Hopkinton stands at 4 wins, 4 losses and 3 ties on the season. Hopkinton is just 7 points away from clinching a postseason spot. After taking on Westwood on Friday, October 4th, the Hillers will be at home for their final 6 games of the regular season. in front here comes Delaney Mick approaching looking for a shot and it's in goal Hillers Hillers girls soccer took down Bellingham on Tuesday October 1st 11 goals overall for the Hillers and an absolutely dominant win Ava Perlov had a hat trick in the win Hillers moved to four wins three losses and two ties on the season Bassington leaves it up. There's a shot, and that is in. Ava Perlov with her second goal of the game. And for Sesnick, back to Butler, closing in. Centers it up, shot, goal. Well Tiffany McCullis. The Hopkinton Area Land Trust held their meeting right here at the HCAM studios. They talked about what the organization is all about and some of their accomplishments. Here's a look. The Hopkinton Area Land Trust hosted their annual meeting at the HCAM studios. Barry Rosenblum explained what the Land Trust is about. Land Trust is, um, when we were established in 1994 with the charter, it was to assist in acquiring and maintaining Hopkinton's open space and conservation land. It's interesting, it's a standalone corporation. It's not an entity related to the town government. It was formed by five residents of Hopkinton. It's a federal nonprofit and a state nonprofit corporation. And everybody on the board are volunteers. All of the labor and energy that goes into maintaining this trust and its responsibilities are done on volunteer hours from the nine of us and some supported by about eight other land steward volunteers. Um, the budget is funded purely through membership dues and donations that we get annually. Okay. A, a short excerpt, I've highlighted the main emphasis from the trust mission statement the trust is formed to preserve, maintain, and conserve land in Hopkinton, in the boundaries of this town. Also, we take on a role of educating the public. We have a new website now that we hope will, will uh, really lead that effort a bit further. And we'll refer more people to it with some educational material. We also facilitate the use um, and encourage land conservation in talking to homeowners, developers, and working with the town. And that's our primary mission in life. Some of the many accomplishments of the Hopkinton Area Land Trust were highlighted during the meeting. A thousand acres of open space has, is now owned by the trust in fee or under conservation restrictions on the land. There's over 15 miles of trails that are actively used by the community. We've applied for 17 grants. We've, we've won 16 of them to help fund projects on, the, on this land that we're responsible for. We've also installed a geocaching program, which we'll talk about a bit further in the presentation. And we've also increased trust awareness through newsletters, efforts and articles, and events. So that's a high-level summary of the past 24 years. They also recognized an Eagle Scout who helped renovate one of the trails in Hopkinton. Oh, uh, um, yeah, sure. What were the highlights for you? 
So, um, yeah, it was a it was a, a tough project. Um, we had to. There was a lot of debris, metal debris that we had to clear, especially barbed wire on the trail. That was tough, but um, we were able to get through it. A lot of volunteers. I want to t thank uh, the Troop One in Hopkinton. There were a lot of scouts there. Um, my troop. Uh, who volunteered and helped me get through the project, and especially um, Halt, um, and especially Mr. Ferber, uh, was a big help in planning the project and getting the work done. And as for members of my troop uh, that I especially want to thank, my Eagle Scout coach, uh, Mr. Kimball, uh, he uh, did a great job in assisting me in planning the whole project and helping to, to see it through with me um, if I had any questions. Um, and my scoutmaster, Mr. Packer, uh, was also a great guiding force, and as well as Mr. Dion and Mr. Haskins, who are a few some parents in the troop that were especially helpful. You can see the full meeting airing on HCAM or at our YouTube page or our website, hcam.tv. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and I'm here to tell you what's happening this week on HCAM. On Monday, October 7th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, October 8th at 6 p.m., the Hopkinton Select Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Conservation Commission meeting will air live on YouTube. On Wednesday, October 9th at 7 p.m., Arthur Bergeron and Amy Beck sit down with volunteers of Hopkinton's Our Time Memory Cafe on a brand new episode of Frank and Mary in Hopkinton. And that's how it started. And we chose the library again because it's in the middle of town. It's a place where um, community is. It's so important to bring community to the people who are living with dementia and also to bring community to them so that they inter interact with each other and feel comfortable and it's a way to bring awareness to the community about what it's like to be living with dementia and what it's like to be a caregiver. And on Friday, October 11th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers volleyball team takes on the Medway Mustangs live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers girls soccer versus Norwood and the girls field hockey versus Westwood game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash newsletters, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. Collaborative was sparked by a former patient of mine who lost his life um, and died by suicide. And that's what prompted me to start this. Um, anyway, I've just become more and more aware of the need for mental health education and awareness and community building, and that's really why I'm doing this. Um, our core program, and I'm, it's, I don't know if it's okay to leave some of these cards here. Absolutely. But our core program is based on mental health literacy. So really, just like we teach people and expect people to know math literacy, overall health literacy. Mental health literacy is also crucial and critical. Um, so 
we're piloting our program beginning in Hopkinton at no charge. Um, we are funding a program called Challenge Success in the high school beginning this fall. And we are working with the uh, middle school and high school on piloting some mental health curriculum programs beginning in the spring and we'll um, hopefully do community-based program programs if they're wanted in the community. And our, our goal, Mental Health Collaborative, our goal is to eventually grow into neighboring towns as well. And just the, the another initiative and the reason that I'm here with Don tonight is um, we're also doing a community, a mental health community needs assessment. And um, our goal is to use that information to, um, you know, guide some of our programming and really have an idea of what's important to our community in regards to mental health. Um, so the survey is currently online mm -hmm. until October 5th, so there's about 10 days left. Um, and I'd love to ask you to offer any help you can in supporting and maximizing the participants in Hopkinton. Um, so it's open to people ages 18 and up. We're collaborating with Hopkinton Youth and Family Services to do this and with Boston Research Group. So it's anonymous, takes less than 10 minutes, and I would just love as many people as possible to, to give us information as to what they need and where they feel the gaps are in regards to mental health. So, any questions? And I think Don wants to talk about another initiative too. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Don. Be Don, before you start, does the board have any questions? I have a question, Mr. Mr. Herr? Abby, the survey, has um, EHOP, through their communications channel, have they notified their constituents, uh, yes. what call them, that they're, yes. it's, it's online? Yeah, we've had a lot of support with HCAM, um, EHOP, uh, just social media, right. just trying to get the word out. It's hard. People are so busy. It's hard. I have some surveys at the Hopkinton Senior Center, and um, yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right, Don, you're up. Okay, thanks. So I'm Don Alcott. I'm the Director of Youth and Family Services. And, and just what an honor and pleasure to collaborate with Abby. Um, I think it's a wonderful thing when a resident um, comes forward in this way to do something for their community when they didn't have to. And um, so I, I applaud her and her efforts um, to serve the community in this way. And we'll certainly glean a lot from the data about what we can do for youth and family services um, here um, in Hopkinton and for the residents in Hopkinton and how we can partner together. Um, there's more than enough to go around in terms of mental health needs. The Hopkinton Senior Center hosted an open house and the annual bocce tournament featuring the seniors, Hopkinton police and fire. Here's a look at the festivities. We're doing some pumpkins out of toilet paper. We're making some pinwheels out of fabric. Um, we're making little skeletons out of cups. They look like mummies, right? Wonderful. And then we're also doing some bookmarks over here. Bookmarks over here. Yeah. These are bookmarks. Oh boy. Oh, and that looks like that's going to roll in. That could be. We're going to have to get Ooh. the tape out. So that's the 11th point. Looks like the Council on Aging is going to take the win. So they would, but are they going to throw the last ball? Sure, I'll throw the last ball. Why not? This is great already one. Well, unless she spocks it. She could spark it right just, out. She should just drop it. There she goes. Wow, nice little spin. And then it rolled back. So, so Gree gets the 11th, 11th point. So, I have uh, one officer right here. So, no. So what? So now we got the seniors beat the staff. It was A for effort, Judy. By the way, that's that capital A for effort. Yeah, well, I mean, you had your hour. one hour. You had your one hour uh, one orientation hour. training practice <laughs> right. session. All right. So, who, who's up next? So now it's supposed to be, but both the police and the fire department 
and who, whichever one of them wins, these guys play them. This cute little ball is called the Polino. Polino. And that starts each game, and the Polino gets thrown, and it has to be more than halfway down <laughs> and within a foot from the borders. Which is indicated by those white markers in the middle. Correct. Okay. And other than that, we just alternate uh, teams. In this case, it'll be red and green. Alternate who scores versus who didn't score. And you'll be calling that from the middle? Yep, and I'll have my American not metric measurement system. Okay. Just so everyone will be uh, on the key of G. And uh, we got through the last game without any fights. Well, we almost had one at the beginning. You, you, you and John were kind of going at it. We were getting a little nervous. I had to separate you two and get you a little <laughs> apple juice, and you guys were fine. Well, that's All right. why we have so, the police here. The, the, now the police are here, so there's no messing around because they take it seriously. So you're already there, right? You're almost halfway there to 11. Oh, yeah. yeah. What's, what, what's going through your mind right now? Well, I'm thinking it'll probably just take one more round until we get to 11. One more round. That's very confident yeah, of you. Uh, we'll double up on some points. You, you do know Chief Lee built a bocce car in the basement of the police station. <laughs> and these guys are pretty good. They could be just playing with you. Uh, that's definitely a possibility, but uh, we've moved one of our trucks out and have a bocce bay in the apparatus bay as well. So I wouldn't rule this out just yet. I was wondering why that trucks were parked outside all winter. Okay, that makes sense. All right, well, go get them. All right. What? What? Really? Uh, a lot of rule changes this year we weren't aware of. This game's under protest. Protest. This Preston, is. You can tase him. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta see it here first. <laughs> the first tasing. <laughs> It was, oh, they already got rid of it. Yeah, wow. 11 to 2 was the final. I think the Chief just tore it down and ripped it all up. But they, I can't believe how fast that went. And I just talked to Amy back two seconds to tell them what's going on. You know, I don't even think we have enough people tuned into YouTube yet.